Hello my dear Libras, this is your love and spirituality reading for the month of November 2018 with me Queen of Cups Tarot. We are entering into Scorpio season after being in your season Libra, so wish all Scorpios out there that you know a happy birthday. So I read for the signs in order of most liked videos, uh, remember to hit the thumbs up button for your sign. You can see the order I read in this time around at the community section of my channel. And thank you all for liking, watching, commenting, donating and subscribing to my channel. I'm super grateful for all of your appreciation. This reading can go both ways. So if I tell you that you are feeling or acting in a certain way, it can be in the reverse that the person you are dealing with is feeling and acting in that way. The energy is the same. It's just different castings to the different roles by the universe. These messages is for the people who watch it. So if you cross watch for another sign and recognize yourself as the main person in the reading, just trust your own intuition and you will get the message you need. For this reading, I will use the Druid Craft Tarot by Philip and Stephanie Cargom, illustrated by Will Worthington. And I will start shuffling your cards. So, my dear Libras, when I open your deck here, I see the Lady and Three of Swords. Uh, so, it seems like someone here is uh, in a little bit of a heartbreak. Uh, both of these are three. Uh, so it can mean a number of things. Uh, the lady here, uh, it's Venus and it's also Taurus. Uh, so it's a very loving energy. It's very beautiful energy. It's kind of what sustains us, us, keeping us alive. Uh, nature's abundance. Without it, uh, we would live on a, a planet that was dead and, and life wouldn't be sustained. But something has happened to this source of life. Uh, that it has been wounded. It almost looked like a bear claw, claw here and I'm thinking the bear is also a sign for, for the feminine. So someone is very strong but yet they have been wounded or even heart broken. Uh, sometimes when it comes to uh, uh, excesses, excessive riches like this, um, people can become like uh, have a need to have it all. Okay, so some people will collect partners uh, pile up money or uh, other kind of goods uh, to feel rich and, and in control and certain because we want to have as much as possible. It makes us feel like we will survive. Some people are like that. And, and that might mean that people will have also multiple partners and uh, kind of um, not care so much for these people's feelings, but only to fulfill their own needs of having plenty, like of this, this riches, okay. Uh, so I call the divine with love and light. And here we see also the devil together with uh, the lady. So there's someone here that's a little bit destructive when it comes to relationships and might not have your best interest at heart, but actually only look to themselves. They're not what they can give, but what they can get. So some people are like this. They are still stuck in their uh, three year old, uh, uh, like the time when we start to, I know for myself, I can do this myself. And six year old, it's all another type of revolution. And then teenager, and some people, they never leave this stage. They stay there forever and are like like children and uh, uh, feel like the world uh, is uh, and like it it is um, it needs to fulfill my needs okay i'm the important one so someone it can be a little bit uh, obsessive about having their needs fulfilled and and they don't know this pleasure uh, that you have when you give things to others and put a smile on their face and make them feel happy. Uh, you are more likely to become happy if you can make the surrounding happy as well. If you can fulfill their needs, it's more likely that they will stay and and we don't have to pile up a lot of partners if that first one leaves because um, uh, this person is only thinking of their own needs. Um, <laughs> they, need, they need to have another person 
that's there and can, you know, start to fulfill the, the role that you played in this person's life. So, uh, but if we can take better care of each other, we can actually be loyal to each other and stay with one another. And we don't have to have this fear and we don't have to pile up riches or partners. But someone here is very insecure. They're living out from their shadow, from their fears. They haven't really faced their fears. So therefore, they are very uh, immature and not particularly developed. And therefore, their relationship is also uh, not particularly developed and actually rather destructive. Um, and uh, it's all about one person's needs and what they can get. It's no real balance here between people. This is uh, Capricorn and this is, as I said, Taurus, Venus. So some of you might be dealing with earth sign uh, people. Okay. Uh, so uh, I call the four archangels in the four corners of the world. And here we see the princess of swords with the lady. So this is kind of the energy I was talking about, the three-year-old, six-year-old and the teenager, a person that have been stuck there and not been able to uh, develop because um, of some difficulties when they were supposed to go through these different uh, stages of maturity. For example, it can be that they have had very uh, strong parents or very capable parents. So the teenager can't really rebel because everything the parent says is uh, is uh, doomed by this teenager as right. I can't compete with this. They are always right. So I just uh, start to become uh, silent and maybe a little bit withdrawn. And I just accept that they are always right and I always wrong. And this person will continue to, trying to do the rebellion because it's necessary for the person to grow up. But they will do it towards weaker people, like people that's easier to do revolution towards. And that's probably not... Uh, like deserving of this at all. Uh, so to grow up, we actually need to take our parents down from the throne and, and put ourselves in their place, like the person that knows the best and uh, can make the decisions in our own life. And uh, that will make us um, make a lot of mistakes uh, in the beginning, but then we will grow up and we will become adults ourselves. So it's the natural process. But some people are unable to rebel against uh, uh, authority, uh, their traditions and cultures, their parents. So they are kind of stuck and therefore um, stuck in being like teenagers for the rest of their life, well, very self-destructive, but also destructive of the relationships around them. Uh, what can help? The Princess of Source is not a destructive card. It just shows a very young energy that is doing revolution. So the princess of source can also be about truth. So if we start to tell the truth, uh, instead of hiding like what we saw with the devil card there, Sir Nunos, uh, we start to tell the other person, I feel like uh, I'm angry with you, but I don't understand why. It feels like I want to uh, destroy our relationship or do this kind of shit because I get angry with you and I don't know the reasons for why this is. And this other person can say, okay, uh, I can have understanding for that. It's probably something that you have with you from past relationships and we can deal with it. So now I know you can tell me, okay, I'm doing this because I feel malicious and angry and I'm letting it go out over you. And this person can say, okay, I understand. So this will be your consequences. Then we... Um, for example, if this person has lied about something, uh, this person won't uh, go along with that lie. Or if this person didn't show up for a meeting, uh, this person says like, OK, then we can meet up at another time. We won't meet up now since you missed. So there need to be consequences also for this action, not only understanding, but also a little bit of education. OK, so I call the six elements. Earth, wind, fire, water, spirit, and ether to join us here today and to give us a clear view reading for my dear Libra viewers. Uh, so we have a, a Queen of Cups uh, jumping there. Queen of Cups can be uh, Cancer, it's usually Cancer, but might be um, Scorpio or a Pisces as well, or any person that is is very like much like the lady and uh, like the empress that we saw number three uh, she's very empathic she has a deep understanding for other people and can be very empathic 
but it seems like there's a conflict here and it's kind of the thing I've told you. It's a person doing a revolution and having conflicts with an empath or a person that's very understanding instead of doing it towards the people that actually deserves this treatment. Uh, instead of, um, uh, imagine this, like you have a husband that is not particularly cooperating and he is um, very cooperating at his work even with his uh, a little bit um, his boss that's not particularly just or fair person he's nice towards him and bending his uh, back backwards and forwards to please the boss but as soon as he come home to his wife uh, that's only wants the best for him he starts to have these arguments that he really should have had with the boss at work or with the friends that betrayed or with, as I said earlier, the mother or the um, standing up towards the authorities that that we need to stand up for to become adults. Uh, and, and instead, we're having conflicts with this person that doesn't really deserve it. So uh, it's easy, but it's also a coward move. And if we can, if uh, whomever is doing this, if it's you, Libra, or most likely you are being a victim of this, the other person needs to start to see it. And the only way for them to start to see it is maybe for the Queen of Cups here to pick up the wand and also, you know, uh, start to make make it not so easy for the other person to take uh, uh, out all their crappy mm, emotions and moods on you. Okay, so it needs to educate this person a little bit to not do this, uh, not give them an easy win, uh, not being like, oh, why are you doing this to me? But actually, no, this is not going to work with me. You know, it's not going to happen. So, where were I? <laughs> so, I want my dear Libras to have a creative success and to be able to walk on your highest path towards your highest destiny, okay? So, there we have it. So, just tune in for a few seconds to your energy and, and uh, the energy of you in November. So my dear Libras, this is your future there and this is your now and this is your past. Uh, so in the past position we see uh, the judgment card, it's rebirth. It's about this process of, of growing up and, and being an adult. The trumpet is sounding, the person is coming out from the tower. Uh, it's like a new uh, beginning for this person. Um, before they were a child and protected by the tower uh, and in later ages maybe if they didn't do the teenage revolution and everything they were protected by their very big ego but here they are coming out from this tower and actually ready to face their more vulnerable sides and, and to risk themselves a little bit maybe by uh, you know uh, giving uh, the heat where it belongs <laughs> so uh, being uh, showing your boundaries towards people that actually needs to hear it instead of uh, lashing out towards your husband or your children or wife or best friend and and so it's a more grown-up person uh, we can see it's a baby here and it just shows this element of vulnerability to not no longer being protected uh, by this hard shell or this ego or uh, this fear that surrounds a person might make them stay in the comfort zone and and lash out like a animal in a cage. Uh, so it's a very it's a very prosperous uh, card showing this growth and it's also judgment day. So it's the day where you face the consequences of your previous actions. Uh, if you have like as you made your bed so if you made your bed nice you will have nice experience after this and get rewards for the hard work you have done but if you have laid your bed in a negative way and tra treating your surrounding in a negative way you will also ripe reap the consequences of that with maybe people not taking the bullshit anymore or you not taking the bullshit from someone uh, that has been immature okay uh, so that is in the past 
and and here we have the now so in the now we have the hermit so the hermit is a situation where we go inwardly to seek for answers and we kind of need to be a little bit alone uh, to find ourselves we need to find our inner voice the connection with our deep source uh, trying in the voice of and in the commerce of everyday life it can be very hard sometimes to feel the very subtle feelings of a yes or a no specifically if we have leaned a lot towards others uh, the hermit is uh, the major arcana teenager it's the person doing revolution towards the hero font and saying, I won't live in your village anymore under your religious laws or your families and traditions. I will live on the mountains in my own cave. So it's like the teenager moving to their own apartment and I'm going to figure myself out. And during this process of the hermit, the person will uh, take and, and, and preserve the things with the society that they just came for, from that they think is valid, okay? These and these things I loved with my parents. They were great people like this, and this is why I want to pass out uh, also to um, my friends and my family and my children. Uh, so this is things I'm going to keep. And this is the other things that I didn't like with my culture or with my upbringing or with how my parents treated me. So this is things I will change. And thereby this person is is kind of estimating what they will keep and what they will leave behind. And they are becoming their own person. They are not small copies of their parents, but they are becoming their own individual and, and, and growing and being able to go back and take part in society. But now as a grown up person with their own thoughts, feelings, attitudes, values, moral codes and so on, that's kind of unique for them, uh, the things that feels good for them and that suits them and are close to their soul and uh, not, uh, not no longer obedient towards what someone else feels are good, but actually uh, their value. So this is making a person into an individual uh, that will be a great match for other individuals of the same kind. Uh, so it's more likely that you will find your soul family when you have done this work properly and, and really gone through these phases of trying to figure out who you are. Uh, okay, and this is the future. And here we have a five of wands. So five of wands is again going back to the hero font. It's number five. It's again, it's Taurus, but it's kind of the opposite a little bit from the Empress. That's a very feminine, passive, outgiving energy. The hero font is someone that wants to um, kind of... Um, organize and take care of the feminine aspect and sometimes it's a little bit of a patriarchal uh, energy that will own and pile up riches so um, here it comes in again with this five of wands so the it's still some battle to uh, that needs to be done in the future for you uh, like when the hermit comes back to society he will have to be brave enough to face up towards his adversaries and tell them, I'm different now. I'm not the same person uh, that I were. And I might make you disappointed, mom, for example. Many people doesn't want their mom to be disappointed with them. So they owe them everything. They gave them their life. They have taken care of them, all the dirty diapers and uh, and all the tears in their upbringing. So they don't want to be malicious towards their mother but even towards their mother they need to say I might not be the sweet little baby that you wanted me to be but I'm my unique self and I hope you will love me for who I am and uh, going back to society going back into the ring back to the relationships and and showing them how you have defined yourself will be uh, a little bit of a battle it's not a major arcana card so it's not like a big deal but it will probably feel uncomfortable it's the thing that you probably have avoided all along to take the conflict to where it's supposed to be instead of um, uh, maybe uh, having it with yourself like an inner conflict or a conflict with the people that you actually want to cooperate with uh, so this doesn't have to be you it can be a person on the outside that needs to go through this maturity process um, and there's still battles to be done okay so we we don't we shouldn't fear conflicts we should go into them as um, 
as mature and harmonic as we can be uh, and try to get uh, our message forward but also being able to listen to the other people's perspective uh, so the more grown up you can be in the heat of the moment the more likely is that uh, this uh, conflict would lead to uh, progression or um, development a positive development of the situation uh, the fives are also connected to the 14 the alchemist card where we kind of meet um, this my demons are meeting with your demons and we are battling it out uh, together and that is making us grow uh, so this is a very growing moment, but it's um, most people doesn't like the drama, and that's good because when we like the drama, we might start conflict with whomever just to feel the win. And some people in your life might be like that, that they want to just start conflict and, and always challenging you, telling you, maybe criticizing you or telling you that that won't work. If you're doing it like that, it's not going to be good. You're going to make a mistake. Uh, Trust me, mothers especially, or fathers maybe too, can be like this. Like they, they have been through it all already. They know the mistakes that will happen. So they might uh, want to for you to avoid to make these mistakes. But actually they are just depriving you of, of your own authority. So you might need to tell these people that let me do my own mistakes. That's the best way for me to learn. Uh, I'm happy for you to tell me uh, your your views uh, whenever I have asked for them, uh, but don't drown me in this because it's 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 making me feel overwhelmed or caged. Okay, so so you might need to tell people very directly how you feel so that they know uh, instead of just um, trying to endure uh, this what the person is trying to tell you like how it's it's better to build a house like this than in the way that you thought but it's your house and they're still trying to persuade you to do something that they think is good but you don't think it's good so you will have to tell them how that makes you feel okay and that might be what uh, many of you have avoided Okay, so this is the past and we have a beautiful nine of pentacles here. I have forgotten what kind of card it was there. Okay, it's the rebirth card. So nine of pentacles is a very good situation because it's talking about, uh, it's the hermit situation, it's nine, nine. But here is a very feminine side of the hermit where you start to nurture yourself. You start to give yourself love and appreciation and support yourself in your decisions uh, you kind of have put a little bit of a boundary here. It's not a high wall. It's not like the tower kind of thing, like it's uh, high to no end. It's it's a little bit of a wall uh, that's necessary for any person. Uh, it's necessary to have boundaries. Uh, what you can tolerate and what you can't tolerate. What makes you happy, what doesn't make you happy. It's very simple and, and you can feel with your body's reaction because this is the body of the hermit. Uh, how they honoring their body. It's kind of the the time with the Buddha where he actually started to nourish his body instead of uh, um, not eating and so on. He started to eat. He became uh, rather luscious and also a happy person. Uh, she doesn't. She's not so happy. And um, uh, this is like a beginner state we can say of a person starting to listen to their own body and their own reaction and and making their body into a home and not letting other people invade that home and step all over you. So it's a start of uh, self-confidence and self-esteem. And it's about building your own life from your own capacity. And it might be having a career as well, um, educating yourself or, or trying to reach towards that happy future where you will be uh, fulfilled and secured without society, without uh, your parents feeding you, you will be able to feed yourself. So that is giving you a sense of self-esteem and a sense of I can take care of myself. Uh, and that is a good foundation uh, for being a grown up person and making yourself happy. Uh, so it's a beautiful card. But it's it's again, it's this with the hermit, right? Trying to figure out, OK, if I do like this, my body feels worse. If I do like this, my body feels better. So it's like trying out what feels good for you and what doesn't feel good. 
Uh, and here we have the Prince of Swords. So Prince of Swords can be a uh, Gemini, it can be you, Libra, or another Libra, or it can be Aquarius. It can be also any sign, but this uh, energy is a little bit of sticky energy. It's like someone here is just uh, having their happy moment, trying to live their life uh, the best way they can, having some achievements, in fact, and some prosperity, like um, they have uh, built something for themselves with the nine of pentacles, but for themselves, it's usually like a singles energy, but someone that has built something for themselves that they are kind of proud of. And here comes like the hurricane into that garden and going to destroy it or going to like steal the stuff here. So it can be the mother energy again. <laughs> I'm just going to take that as an example. Like you have built your own home here and she is coming, maybe criticizing you for how you have cleaned the place or uh, that you haven't um, like filled up gas in your car or whatever, like something that's um, it's degrading you a little bit. So the Prince of Swords isn't always like a negative energy. It's very, it's very, uh, is an energy with a lot of visions, but it's a little bit my way or the highway visions. So it's a little bit like an imperialistic energy, uh, like um, <laughs> the uh, English and French that went all over the world in the 1800s and told people how they should live their lives. So that kind of energy, like I know better than you. And actually they, they, could have learned a lot from those cultures that they destroyed, but instead they came in and and they kind of destroyed it. So it's it's what's happening here. Uh, someone is seeing that someone has he here something beautiful and they kind of want to have it, but they want to have it in their own way. Uh, so um, uh, it's it's you can see the sword is risen and the shield is up and also the horse have some shielding in, over the face like a mask on their face so they are masking their emotions they're protecting themselves and they are hurting others so it's not a, a particularly nice energy um, in this stage it's a person that comes with ignition uh, like this energy is necessary uh, a little bit of a destruction destructive energy is necessary for in other case we will lose ourselves in paradise and we wouldn't develop and we will stay children but with this kind of energy there's some resistance and some um, malicious things going on in our lives that we need to build up strength towards and and uh, if if uh, she wouldn't have any uh, problems she wouldn't learn anything but with the hurricane sometimes coming and disrupting her garden uh, she has problems and that is is uh, making her uh, a more resilient more strong more experienced person so it's actually making us grow when we have these kind of problems and here it seems like a singles person that might have some kind of inter interaction with with a person that might come to their house or might come to their life and distort things or make things disharmonic. But uh, it's only to um, for this person to grow even more. So it's actually positive in the end. Okay, and here we have the Lord. Uh, so I'm thinking the Lord is here sitting on the throne and still having this calm expression as uh, this woman on this picture. So I'm thinking these constant attacks that's on you, uh, that's happening from the outside, people coming and attacking you, um, or maybe you attacking other people, it's actually making them stronger, okay, more sure, <laughs> more adult. So it's, we see a person that's growing here. Um, this is an Aries also. For, so for some of you, this person, maybe malicious person attacking might be an Aries. But what they are coming with is teaching you boundaries, okay, they teach you about this. Uh, they don't respect your boundaries, so they teach you about having boundaries because uh, since they don't respect it, uh, you need to find out where your boundaries are and then you need to, uh, you know, stand up and fight for them like this. So uh, by their uh, little bit bad behavior, they're actually making you stronger and they are learning you something that that they already know they probably have very high boundaries and nothing is allowed to you are not allowed to do this and this and this and this and this and this and that in their home or uh, towards their persona but they don't have so much issues with doing the same thing towards you uh, so it's a little bit lopsided uh, situation but uh, it's actually teaching you something about boundaries and about growing up and being a uh, adult person you don't have 
parents anymore that can you know protect you and uh, and guide you and uh, you know um, see to that your life is calm and secure you actually need to become the grown-up to do that yourself so you can't expect other people to be uh, like your parents and and taking care of you you need to take care of you you need to show where your boundaries are at uh, okay uh, so and that was the past and this is the now and here we have a princess of wands so again that might be a fire energy uh, like uh, uh, aries leo or sagittarius but it might only be like an energy in your life about messages about something that wants to be communicated it's some kind of longing uh, you might long for a person, um, maybe even the malicious person uh, to come or you want to communicate or you have something. Sometimes when we have had a little bit of a battle, uh, afterwards we can come up with things that we wanted to say. So here is some kind of longing to have something said uh, or to express your soul. It might also be a longing to not be a singles person anymore. We have like singles energy here with the hermit there and the nine of pentacles here so with the princess of wands it can be uh, maybe after this attack we went into the hermit mode again but then we started to feel like well i don't want to stay like this forever i want to go out i want to have relationships in my life even if they seem hard uh, i still want to try so the princess of wands is is a very beautiful energy that comes from your soul and, and kind of pushes you uh, beyond your limits, beyond your comfort zone, pushing you out in life, making you long for love or for other people or for new adventures or for uh, new careers or new expressions like creative expressions. So it's a very, it's life force, we can say, like life is longing to fulfill itself. And the next card is the King of Wands. So King of Wands is usually Leo. In this deck, it's more depicted as Aries. You can see this with the ram's horn there with the Aries. That's also depicted on this card. Uh, uh, and it can also be a Sagittarius. Uh, so um, the King of Wands coming very central. It's talking about your creativity. The King of Wands is a creator. Uh, the Lord is a little bit like more a stiff energy that kind of holds its ground, while the King of Wands is more uh, ignitive, like more this life force energy. Uh, so it's about creating beautiful things in your life or um, following your longing, your heart's longing, your soul's longing. It's also about being the adult person. This is an adult person that kind of have integrated their child uh, into themselves. So they are standing up for their inner child. They are not going to let uh, their inner core be betrayed, uh, but they are not hostile either. It's, it's You can see this on their posture. They have it full of self-respect, but they are not hostile. And they have their shield on their side here. So they are not like expecting any attack or any war. Uh, so it's a person being self-confident and and ensure uh, of themselves okay and um, um, I don't do reversals here but if the card would have come in reversal like this it can be a jealous person a combative person or a person that uh, wants to possess it's almost like a little bit touch of the devil uh, when it comes like that but here we see the king of wands together with the lord here it's a very strong posture of a person becoming grown up at, uh, owning their own ground not letting uh, outside forces um, impact their decisions too much or impact their lives too much they are actually standing their ground holding their space um, being uh, <laughs> in self-respect and self-honor and therefore trusting themselves and their own uh, intuition or their own um, like insights that they have got. So they don't change course of direction just because their mother comes and say, well, shouldn't you have a porch here if you are going to build this house? No. <laughs> or maybe, well, yes. That's a good idea because they are grown up. They don't have to be petty. They don't have to uh, they don't have to like do revolution just because of for the sake of revolution okay uh, and here we have also a prince of wands so it's very fiery energy here in in November it seems like there will be 
uh, travels, there will be passionate meetings, maybe meetings about the future. So Inspire is very future oriented. Uh, it might be like someone wants to ignite their future or travel towards their future or make their future. So it might be that during November you will have uh, very much creative energy and a lot of strength uh, to build your uh, dream. Okay, whatever dream you are having, uh, you will be able to build it. And why this is, is because you have matured and kind of figure out what it is that you want. So now you're, you're going to get it. You're out to go to get what you want. You're grown up enough to not listen to any outside um, bickering or things that, uh, that could before taint your vision of whatever it is, what, what you're dreaming of. Because sometimes we can have people in our life, we say we dream about this and they say, well, that won't be possible because this and this and this. And you say, well, then I dream about this. No, that won't be possible because this and this and this and this. And here you don't listen to that anymore. That resistance have actually made you more sure of yourself. It has, it, that resistance was what forced you to build walls to figure out what you stand for and to figure out what it, what your dreams are, not what the other people's dreams are, but what your dreams are. And now you're going to go out and get them. It might also be that they're coming in a fire person in your life, uh, very positive energy, it seems, and wants to have some kind of change or fulfillment happening. It might be a very passionate energy. Uh, it can be a very sexual energy as well. Um, so if you don't want a sexual encounter and just the sexual encounter, you might want to, you know, um, be a little bit uh, sitting on the bench watching out what this person is actually offering because it might not be like a forever love. If that is what you're searching for, uh, this person in in this ignition phase, I don't see like eternal love. I'm more seeing like this spark or explosion. <laughs> so uh, if you want something more, you might want to, you know, listen out what what is it that you want and not just be charmed by this energy coming into your life. Uh, OK, so this is your future. And here we have the Queen of Swords. So the Queen of Swords is usually a you, Libra. Uh, it can also be an Aquarius or a Gemini or any person that has a little bit like a cold attitude to the, towards this thing. It's like what I said, sitting this one out like, uh, so, okay, here you come with all these future plans and all this passion and you say that you want this and this and this. And well, uh, we'll see uh, if this is the truth. I will watch you. So I have my eyes on you and I will see if this you mean business or if it's just like something that you come here with this energy just to fulfill your own needs uh, so and this doesn't have to be a sexual situation it can be in a business situation uh, family situation whatever kind of situation where one person is very ignited and have a lot of like energy here and want something to be done and it's kind of this masculine energy a little bit so it's very like uh, I want to go and grab and it doesn't have to be a male doing that. Uh, anyone that's ready to take uh, whatever necessary means to fulfill their dream uh, is the one I'm talking about here. So someone that feels very passionate and they want something really strongly. Uh, but this energy here, uh, Queen of Swords, uh, might be very might be open for this and like intrigued by this they want this it's it's um, exciting but in the same time uh, they have ha they had been able to create something here for themselves that's kind of secure and they don't want this verbal wind to come in and destroy it all so they are going to see like uh, maybe I let you in maybe I don't let you in it depends on your behavior. So it's it's um, it's a very judging energy and she has closed her eyes. So it's like she's not open to taking new ideas. She probably have learned a lot from her past and gone through a lot of things to come to this place. She's a little bit like the hermit. She lives here up on a cliff uh, just as the hermit. So uh, she she feels in peace when she's alone. And when they come in other people, maybe they destroy her inner peace. And, and she remembers what they have done towards her. So she's not going to like easily um, be persuaded or charmed into something stupid. Okay.
we have the eight of wands in here also so it seems like after a period of a hermit mood you want to have more life in your life but if you're searching for maybe old partners that have a history with you uh, or there's a ex that has a history with you and they are trying to come back uh, you might not be that particularly excited like they seem very excited but maybe you won't be excited or if it's you reaching out the other person might not be that excited because they have memories, okay, of things not going that well. So they are not as enthusiastic. Uh, they are intrigued, but not enthusiastic. And here we have a Queen of Pentacles. So Queen of Swords together with Queen of Pentacles. Okay, so I'm thinking um, this person here wants commitment, okay? They want serious things. There's no playing games here. It's not going to work with this person. Uh, so Queen of Swords together with Queen of Pentacles, it can, of course, uh, be two different women. Um, one not taking any bullshit, uh, the other one uh, being like open for business, but it needs to be something that's loyal and friendly. OK, it can't be just uh, like someone coming in and stealing stuff from their village. Then they won't go with that if it's going to be like some kind of attack towards their persona they are not going to they have the rabbit here again you see the rabbit that we have also in the rebirth card uh, so it might show that you are not as vulnerable as you were before so if someone comes and wants stuff with you you might say yes or you might say no depending on what you think this person wants you're not going to just say yes out of uh, so it's the same thing with this with the boss kind of thing if you have you don't go with everything your boss says anymore. It's like, well, I will listen to this inner, uh, little bit fragile part of me. That's the one that's going to be sacrificed if you are like coming here with a lot of bullshit. Uh, so I'm going to listen to this part of me because I'm now like this grown up that's taking care of my inner child and my more um, fragile parts. So this seems to be the same for both these people. Uh, like this person have that kind of uh, way of them and this person have this kind of way of them. So both are not ready to sacrifice uh, their more vulnerable self for the cause of this project, this relationship. So if this situation is going to make them worried, anxious, uh, feeling like um, out of whack or losing their inner peace or inner harmony, it's most likely that there will be a no from both of these sides. But this person is more positive, okay, more thinking that this will work out. This person is a little bit more suspicious and they want to see the money up front <laughs> before they kind of uh, say yes to this, okay. And with the, all this suitor energy, it might, of course, be someone that has more than one partner, uh, kind of what we saw in the beginning. Like if it, this one says no, maybe that one says yes. But in this case, I think everyone will say no because they, they have a history with this person probably or with people like this and they are not going to go with just anything. So if you feel that people are against your project, they don't think it's a good idea, uh, you might need to show some real effort uh, into maybe a greater plan for the project if you want to have other people engaged in it. Um, show where the money is going to come from, show uh, uh, who will do what kind of work to make this project uh, rolling. So um, it's someone that's reluctant to do an investment. They don't want to do this uh, in, before they know that it's actually going to lead to something positive. They don't want to give away their energy to something that will be just stupid or a waste of time. And so either this is money or love or whatever, it doesn't matter. Okay. And here we have a 10 of pentacles. So that's the price, uh, the, the Lord here or the uh, King of Wands and the Prince of Wands that they need to pay if they want to do this is show money up front. Okay. Show uh, that they mean business. If uh, if this person wants a relationship, they need to show a relationship with you. For example, they need to show that they want it for the long haul, not just like a fling. Uh, if they just want a fling, maybe you will be 
in it, but probably not. I'm not seeing like a yes there. Uh, they need to show money up front. So that's kind of what I'm seeing. And that will be maybe a little bit of a conflict because this person, particularly Prince of Wands, uh, Sagittarius energy is a little bit, whatever I lay my hat is my home. So they are expecting to be welcome wherever they come. Probably they are a rather charming person, but they might, we do these two masculine princes is the war mongers. So they kind of go getters, go grabbers. So they just, they don't care about the village itself. Um, here's the wise woman of the village and here's the value of the village, we can say. <laughs> and uh, they just want this value. They, they don't care maybe if the village is burnt when they leave the place. It it's not, means nothing to them because they are young, selfish energy. Uh, so, and, and this person here, uh, they don't like the village to be burnt. So, uh, they they want to see some, if, if the person is going to be invited into this village, they are going to have to show money up front or, you know, make promises or uh, show for a long time that they mean business. Like, they need to show loyalty, like family loyalty. Like, you belong to the village, so you wouldn't destroy it. Kind of that thing. Uh, so it's pretty obvious that there will be a little bit of conflict because some person is all about maybe themselves here and, and the other person is self-preserving. And so that's a little bit of a conflict. So I'll read the King of Wands for you. That's the central energy of this reading. So it might be a fire energy being uh, the most central thing of, of your reading. Family, friends, um, partners... Um, we have talked a lot of, about parents, so it might be parents also. Um, I, uh, and in this case, hmm, maybe they need to prove something finally. <laughs> that, uh, okay, uh, you have bossed me around my whole life and now if you want to come to my new home, you need to show like that you respect me or something like that. Okay. The King of Wands is the ideal person to be in a charge of an organization. He can hold the vision and inspire others to cooperate with him with his enthusiasm and optimism. His natural ability to be a leader combined with his affinity for the element of fire uh, and hence dragons reminds us of the pentagon of Archeon le legend and the, of Druid ritual. A person with the king's character is often lively and amusing, freedom-loving and ambitious. He makes a passionate lover, but partners must be aware of his longing for freedom. Just as fire needs air to breathe, a king of wands needs wide open spaces in his love life and in his physical surroundings. Decisive and strong-willed, he can be uh, unsympathetic towards others' negativity or weakness since he experienced these feelings so rarely, so he kind of doesn't understand that, uh, why someone wouldn't uh, have the courage uh, or why someone wouldn't um, want to take this offer or something like that. Uh, his strong will makes him a good, good at uh, forging a long-term career through his dynamic nature. This like of routine and love of challenge will often make him eager to rush off to seek new adventures. And it's kind of like twi uh, like times um, 10 here with both the Lord, the Prince of Wands and the Princess of Wands. So it's an increase of this energy. It's very, very passionate. If not uh, denoting a person, uh, the card might signify a windfall of negotiations, particularly around financial arrangements associated with marriage or divorce. Alternatively, it can refer to property settlements, uh, charities, trust or art projects funding. It can also indicate that you need to express your ideas, make important decisions, set goals or seek a guiding vision. And also the rebirth here, that's the foundation card here, is talk about making decisions. So maybe a decision is made and, and someone is like, okay, now I have finally made up my mind. And then everyone else seems like a little bit reluctant to go with this and like, no, we don't believe you. We know how it was in the past there. And you can't fool us, fool us uh, once, shame on you, fool us twice. We don't, we are not going to make a fool of ourselves. So that's what's going on here. 
Uh, so, uh, oracle card for you. I'm having new oracle cards. This Oracle of the Angels. I was doing a review um, yesterday about these cards. And here we have the card of light. So I'm going to read, and it's a lot of light here. This is fire. And it's actually fire there in her little, um, <laughs> what she's cooking there. Okay. Uh, and fairies, fairy, fiery, fairies. And an eagle, I think, or a hawk. So someone having this above uh, way of seeing things. Like the judgment here, seeing things from an above perspective, making a judgment call, uh, being very grown up in the situation. Choose to seek out the light in your life. Focus on the light that burns bright within your heart and you will illuminate the darkness that you feel surrounds you. So um, clear communication, okay? So if you suspect someone not having like the best intentions, make them prove themselves and if they can't prove themselves then they kind of reveal themselves okay there's no need to fear the unknown embrace all parts of yourself and the full experience of life by facing your shadows you will move into a newfound sense of balance and peace and there's a little bit of a, uh, exercise for you also where you say i face my shadows with love in my heart and transform them to ever greater light i seek out the light in my life and I'm grateful for my many blessings. Uh, so whatever is being, if we are fearful sometimes, uh, we don't want to check into things that feels uncomfortable. Uh, we, are, we are kind of increasing the shadow of, of that thing and it's hold on us and it's getting more control. But if we are facing our fears heads on, uh, talking about issues that other people maybe prefer to sweep underneath the rug uh, and being very clear like this, we overcome our fears and we we um, exchange darkness for light because you can't take darkness into the sun it will just be light uh, but you can take light into a dark room and make that room lighter and brighter so the light will always win so face your darkness and it will kind of um, um, just become more light <laughs> so it's uh, to, to face your fears is uh, very rewarding and and the king of wands knows that so whatever you have been fear fearing maybe putting off because you didn't feel you have the capacity to do it and maybe there's a lot of naysayers around you that think you can't do it uh, you don't have to prove yourself okay you just have to uh, do your own thing face your own fears work towards your goals and and the naysayers they can they can have their proof over time if that's important for you what they think but if not, uh, I think you have enough capacity, Libra, to do this on your own and fulfill your life uh, even on your own. But this is a very beautiful family situation, even if there's people here being very, very suspicious. <laughs> so there's rewards with getting these people on board. But um, if they don't do it immediately and there's some kind of conflict, you don't have to fret or worry about that. You can just continue towards your goal and, and, and showing people that you have changed or or that uh, you have come out of some kind of uh, procrastination and, and you now mean business. Uh, so it's a very beautiful energy that you can use to build uh, endless prosperity because we have nine of pentacles, uh, king of wands, ten of pentacles. So this is a very, very um, prosperous situation where you can really find happiness um, and, and by following your, the voice of your soul. Uh, so no matter, no matter the obstacles, the king of wands doesn't fear obstacles. He's a problem solver. So... Whatever obstacles will come, he will deal with it when it comes. It doesn't have to worry like 10 years before it comes. You can worry the day it comes. It doesn't have to worry that, oh, 10 years from now, um, we won't work because in my 10-year plan, I have this planned out and you have this planned out. So we will like clash then. It will end. So it's no use to have this relationship overall. And so the King of Wands would never think like that because that day, that sorrow, it's not the sorrow of today. Today we live and embrace the now and we don't worry about the future. So that will be your key to success, to do like that. Okay. So my dear Libras, I hope this helped. I want you to take really good care and I also want to welcome you back to my December reading that I will perform in the middle of November. Okay. Bye-bye.